The Pilot Episode, a short, special, or episode that sets the groundwork from what to expect from a series. These are usually used to sell a series to a network. A lot of times, the audience gets a glance at these pilots. For those of us who grew up in the 80s and 90s, it was usually during the day of a holiday where the networks didn't have a new episode of a soap opera or a game show. So they used these in its place because the networks knew the kids were home. Well, the pilots that failed to get a show anyway. But today we're going to look at a particular pilot episode that actually made it into ABC Primetime. A pilot that strayed so far from the original source material, or is it the other way around, that it became its own thing and improved it. Yeah, we're not there yet. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, I am too damp. And this is the history of Disney television animation, Disney's Fluffy Dogs. As most of you know, right off the bat, Disney intended their animated series to sell toys. And that is what the first three attempts at a television animated series were. While Wuzzles didn't last too long, and Gummy Bears made it through six seasons, Fluffy Dogs fell flat on their face right out the gate. Maybe it's because the toys look like this? That is a mop. They are trying to pass mops off as stuffed dogs. The Flippy Dog plushies were made by Kenner, because Disney is loyal to no company but themselves. The copyright is indeed Disney, although, at times, I can't seem to find the Disney name on the boxes. At least, not in this photo. So based on copyright alone, I'm guessing the Fluffies were a Disney idea. The toys came out around Christmas of 1986, and so did the special. We'll get back to that in a bit. There were books and tapes telling the story of the Fluffy Dogs, and boy do these books and tapes and the toys themselves have nothing to do with the special outside of the name Fluffy Dogs. And maybe the character designs. We'll get back to that. The earliest copyright I found for the Fluffy Dogs was in October of 85. It was basically visuals of the characters and a temporary name which was just the color of the dogs. The names that were given for the special were copyrighted around October of 86, a month before the special came out. In any case, we got two different versions of the Fluffies. Somebody's coming! Quick, get rid of this stuff! Like them. <laughs> this story, five dog-like creatures who hungered for adventure journey through different dimensions in hopes of finding their home world. Finally, they stumble upon Earth, where they are mistaken for dogs and captured by a dog catcher. Now in the pound and desperate to get home, the five fluffy dogs devise a plan to escape. In order to do this, they must act like dogs and get adopted by a family. Stanley, the more adventurous of the fluffy dogs, volunteer for this task. The plan is to get adopted, escape from the family, and break the other fluffies out. Along the way, they meet unnecessary humans and try to escape the evil collector J.J. Wagstaff, all the while trying to find their way home. The story is fun because it's not too cutesy like you would expect from a cartoon based off a toy line like this. Well, there are adorable situations, mainly with Claire, the really 80s human girl, and the fluffy Tippy. I don't remember the 80s all that much since I was a kid, but did girls really talk like that in the 80s? Yeah, we can laugh at what we look like in the 80s now, but remember, in 30 years, everyone's going to laugh at how we currently look. The 80s did it with the 50s. The story does not come off as boring. It's well-paced, it has a sense of magic and whimsy, and I'm actually invested in these characters. And as a bonus, I'm not annoyed. It's a fun special from start to finish, and I would have loved to see more of these characters. Tippy, Tippy. Uh -huh. oh. Oh. Tippy, is that you? I think so. What are you? Don't ask questions. Just get on before Claire sees us. Quick! For this review, I decided to take a look at some of the books and other material that came out alongside with the special. Now, the reason why I did this is because I wanted to see what the series would have looked like 
and felt like if the series was greenlit by Disney. Unfortunately, as I said before, what I got from these books on tape was completely different from what was presented in the show. The background is different, the story is different, the humans are different, the names are different. It's like someone from the story department forgot to tell someone in the toy department that they went in a different direction. Or maybe by the time the final script was finished, it was too late. It takes six months to make a half hour cartoon. Imagine how long it took to make an hour long special, let alone making a series bible. The names of the characters had to be decided on way before they were copyrighted, right? Now I found the copyrighted names for the dogs for the TV series, but not the dogs in the books. And the toys. The earliest copyright I found for the books is in September of 86. So either there was a lack of communication between Disney, Kenner, and Western Publishing, or they decided to do their own thing. The books are pretty much all a slice of life episode, with no real threat outside of being basically a dog's life. Not really interesting to say the least. But I'll give you some of the background of what the official merchandise says about the toys. Once upon a time, in a magic pet shop, there lived six fluffy dogs, each with a pom-pom nose, satin bows, and fun to tie up hair. A snuggly soft fluffy dog was to be your best friend. It's really generic, honestly. Reminds me of another 80s toy that centers around dogs that are adoptable. But that's from the toy box perspective. Here's what I gathered from listening to the tapes of the stories. So pretty much what I found is basically slice of life stories of the six dogs. I think they added more dogs later on. The dogs are named Connie the Cuddle Fluff, who turned into Tippy the Purple Lovely Fluffy, Baxter the Brave Fluff, who turned into Stanley the Blue Loyal Fluffy, Cliff the Cool Fluff, who has a New York accent, so you know he's cool. Who was turned into Ozzy the Green Cool Fluffy, who has the voice of a timid Garfield. You have Sharon the Shy Fluff, who was turned male and into Dink the Red Playful Fluffy. There's also Sally the Silly Fluff, who is turned into Bink the Yellow Shy Fluffy. And you have Francine the Fancy Fluff, who apparently died during dimension hopping because she wasn't in the show at all. And they have a human girl, Barbara, looking after them. The Fluffies do stuff, average, ordinary stuff. It's the day of a life of dogs who look like mops. Honestly, there's not really much of note about this. No magical pet shop. I don't even think there's any magic involved with these books. Cut and paste generic storytelling that's really bland. Perfect for preschoolers, but if this was the concept that was the first idea, then it's no wonder Disney wanted to make a change. If this came out after the Disney concept, then all I could say is, Wolf. You can talk. I wish you wouldn't keep saying that. I've been talking since I was three. Animation. As always from the early Disney stuff, the animation is fluid. Not as good as the movies, of course, but still really good. That's TMS Entertainment for you. The character movements, the backgrounds, the special effects, it's classic 80s Disney television animation. And as a bonus, the fluffy dogs don't look anything like the toys. Well, maybe a little bit close, but they don't look like mops in the series, and they don't look like they're generally geared towards girls. Now there is a problem that another YouTuber who reviewed this special, named Mad Munchkin, pointed out. The dogs look almost exactly alike. That is kind of the problem when you base this series off of a look-alike toy where there's a few differences outside of the toy's color. But that's not really the fault of the animation itself. It's the fault of the original concept. I do love that Disney did attempt to try to differentiate the dog's look by adding clothes. You know, hats, jackets, and whatnot. It helped a little, but not by much. One of the more interesting things that I noticed is this is one of the few series or any animation to come out of Disney 
that's set in the 80s that have humans in it. It's interesting to see Disney's interpretation of the 80s trends in clothing, hairstyles, and dialogue. I mean, the only movie that Disney has that's set in the 80s is Oliver and Company. And yeah, you have some specials like Tolly Mini and Mickey's 60th Birthday, which kind of gives you a glimpse. I'm talking more about how the humans look, and not so much the anthropomorphic animal characters. Oliver and Company does come close though. And yeah, I know the Rescue Rangers are set in the 80s with humans, but that series was more timeless than it was using any of the 80s trends at the time, except for maybe Gadget's jumpsuit. So with that said, the 80s human characters in Fluffy Dogs, well, they could have been a lot worse. <laughs> The music. So one of the more disappointing things about this series is the music is just there. It's nothing really special. You don't get a theme song because it is a special, but there wasn't any real musical cue that stood out for me, which is really disappointing. Yeah, sure, the music helped move the story along, and it's better than nothing. It just feels like they needed a score for the special and they went with something that's just there. Turn after these messages. On the next Disney Sunday movie, it's a special Disney treat. Fluffy's dead ahead! Look out! Let's get out of here! Fluffy dogs, brave adventurers from another world who sometimes act like people. You mean you can just open doors and walk right into other worlds? They won't escape this time. Come on, Fluffy! We have to help them! The door! Do something, Stanley! It's out of this world fun and adventure with Disney's Fluffy Dogs. <laughs> Characters. Now we get to the biggest problem with this special, and it's the characters. Honestly, it's not really the fault of the special as much as the fact that this was intended to be a series, and we could explore the other characters after the special. With the special, we got to explore some of the aspects of these characters. Stanley is adventurous, always looking for an adventure, but while looking for a chance to get home. Ozzy is there to sniff out the different dimensional doorways, on Earth to try to get home. Tippy is Stanley's counterpart, and the twins are pretty much there. Again, with so many characters in an hour-long special, there really isn't time to flush them all out. We get some aspects, but not really all that much. I do like that the original concept for Ozzy was supposed to be the cool flop, but in the special, he's more of a timid and shy fluffy. Those are complete opposites. Again, that's a possible lack of communication. Also, I love this line. But they're treating us like dogs and we aren't. So these guys are about as much as dogs as this thing. B-A-B-E-B-E-B-I-B-I-B-I-B-I-B-I-B-I-B-I-B-I-B-I-B-I-B-I-B-I-B-I-B-I-B-I-B-I-B-I-B-I-B-I-B-I-B-I-B-I-
It also proves that all those commercials promoting Flippy Dog toys are treating the toys wrong. You're not supposed to treat them like dogs. That is profiling. And that is wrong. We also get the unnecessary human trope named Jamie because dimensioned hopping dog-like creatures in a world they don't understand, so they need human guidance. Also, this series needed a character to react to all the trouble the fluffy dogs get in after opening these dimensional doorways. By the way, I love the dynamic between Jamie and his mother. Because all the trouble the fluffy dogs are causing for Jamie, his mother is not about to let it slide. At one point, she tries to have a heart-to-heart -heart with Jamie. It's very mature compared to some of the dribble that came out during the 80s when dealing with parents' relationships with kids in cartoons. We also get introduced to Jamie's neighbor, Claire. And that is because Jamie can't keep Tippy, who he just bought from the pound, so he gives Tippy to his next-door neighbor. There is some indication that Jamie and Claire do not get along with each other, thanks to this line. Tell you what, why don't you see if Claire next door wants her? Then they can be neighbors. Claire? Mom, she hates me! But you don't really get to see that tension in this special. It's really just a throwaway line, because these two get along really well. And then you have the bad guy, the evil animal collector hunter guy. J.J. Wagstaff. He's a big business guy with a lot of money, so automatically he's bad. Why is it that characters with a lot of money always end up being the bad guy? I'm surprised Scrooge McDuck isn't the bad guy. Anyway, Duke Igthorn's great-great-grandson discovers the Fluffies and decides he wants them for his own. So, what are you going to do with them? Just have them in a cage and lock them up? Well, they talk. He could force them to do rap battles. Or is he going to Cruella de Vil them? Mount their heads on the wall? Which is kind of tasteless considering I don't even think people who trophy hunt put dogs' heads on their wall. JJ Wagstaff is really average. He doesn't stick out. He reminds me of an older, more even-tempered Duke Igthorn. He's not terrible, but he also isn't rememberable. Again, pretty much the entire cast is kind of bland, and that's not really the fault of anyone on the staff, simply because pilot episode of the series that never took off the ground. The world's finest collection of exotic animals, and now, Brappies! Broadcast history. So there is a reason why I decided to release this video on Thanksgiving, and that is because of the broadcast history of Fluffy Dogs. ABC broadcast the special on primetime on Thanksgiving Day in 1986. I've seen news articles that the reason why this series didn't take off is because of lack of interest and low ratings. Well, that's what you get for airing a special on one of the biggest travel holidays in the United States. Why would you do this? It's like Fox airing a new episode of Bob's Burgers during the Super Bowl. No one is going to be watching. ABC shot itself in the foot by doing this, and Disney for allowing ABC to air it on Thanksgiving. So the show never actually happened which may have been a good thing. It would have started in 1987, which was not a good year for ABC's lineup. Well, that's if the show was going to be on ABC. ABC's lineup in 1987 kind of felt like it was geared towards babies. You had Care Bears, My Pet Monster, Little Clowns of Happy Town, Little Wizards, Flintstone Kids, all of which were canceled the following year. Well, Flintstone Kids came back in reruns, and that is because John K. happened to be me and Cecil. Yeah, sure, you had staples like Weekend Special and Animal Crackups, and you did have two very popular shows in the Bugs Bunny and Tweety Show and the Real Ghostbusters. But that was pretty much it. Although, ABC also had a series that the Fluffy Dogs could have been considered ripping off. Pound Puppies. They kind of already cornered the market for cutesy dog cartoons. Although, the Pound Puppies all look like they've been punched in the face in the toy department. 
Man, what happened to these guys? Yeah, 87 was a bad year for ABC. Considering all the cutesy stuff was replaced, and the Fluffy Dogs probably would not have been an exception, considering it's based off of a toy line that looks like a mop. ABC had some of their best seasons starting in 1988, until 1990 where they decided it was a good idea to have a New Kids on the Block, Wizard of Oz, and Roseanne cartoons. <laughs> what kind of flood were you in? Underground. And he used to be such a nerd. Does he talk to? No. Oh, <laughs> fantastic. For merchandise, there's obviously the staff animals. You had books. Fairly standard merchandise for a series like this. Nowadays, it's stuff that you have to wait for years to get with today's current Disney cartoons. Unless you're already an action figure or you're a Disney Junior cartoon. I'm never going to let that go. As far as the series continuation goes, I decided to take a look at some of the books to see if I could get a feel of what a Fluffy Dog series would be like. They were no help because they were completely different from what the special was. But I did discover on the Fluffy Dog's Disney Wiki page that somebody put up some of the highlights of the Fluffy Dog series Bible. And it's very interesting. The Fluffy Dog's headquarter would be in Stanley's doghouse that goes into a treehouse. It would have computers and wires and monitors and all kinds of tech. This series adventures would range from getting Jamie out of trouble to dimension hopping or dealing with some kind of trouble that the dimensional doorways would bring from other worlds. They would have some villains like a dog catcher and a news reporter and it would have been fun. Personally, I would have used the pilot as an ending of the series because it felt like an ending and have the rest of the series start from when the Flippy Dogs would leave their home and have them dimension hopping and show everything that happened before the special. It would be more interesting than having them be human pets. Three of them. I have three floppies. <laughs> you may be intelligent, but J.J. Whitestaff is smarter than all of you together. In conclusion, it's very odd to say that Disney had a few failures under the belts at the beginning of their television animation department. But honestly, I can't call that any other way. Fluffy dogs failed. But we learn from these failures. We take different routes because doing the same thing over and over again and expecting the same results is ludicrous. This special was a mess and it's not because of the special itself, it's because of the promotional material that came out at the same time. When the toys, the books, and everything else is completely different than what you are given from the special, it's going to turn people off because they are going to assume that by the toys and the books that this is what the special is going to be like and they're not going to tune in. Which is really a shame because this special is interesting and I would have loved to have seen the expansion of the Fluffy Dog universe through a Fluffy Dog TV series. But there were missteps, bad air dates and more. It's not a surprise that this is all we got for an animated version of Fluffy Dogs. But Disney was not about to stop taking risks. For the next history of Disney television animation, I'm going to look at what is probably the biggest risk taken by the television animation studio. I'm Toonip. Thanks for watching. Oh, they call it Fluffy Dog. Introducing the Fluffy Dogs Collection. She wagged her tail. We were face to face. I thought, this dog has taste. Oh, they call it Fluffy Love. I said, want to go out? She nodded, yuck. I got hooked on a fancy flock. She's got everything I want. I love that little debutante. Fluffy Love. Pink Fancy Flop from the Fluffy Dogs Collection. New from Kenner.